Hello everyone, thank you for uh, joining this virtual talk here at the uh, Life Embedded um, event. And um, today I'm here to talk about uh, Piper, which is uh, a new technology for Linux uh, that is essentially uh, a multimedia service uh, that has been in development for quite a long time, I would say uh, more than five years. Uh, and now it's mature enough um, uh, and ready uh, to be used for the automotive world and the embedded world. Um, so yeah, before uh, moving on to the main topic of this talk and see how uh, you know Piper works and how it can be used for uh, the automotive and embedded world, uh, I'd like to do a quick introduction to myself first. Um, so as you can see, my name is Julian. Uh, I am a Spanish uh, multimedia software developer uh, working at Collabora. Uh, I joined the company quite recently. Uh, I joined at the beginning of 2019. And since I joined the company, I've been part of the multimedia team and I've been mostly working with uh, uh, Piper and the streamer projects. So that being said, let's move on to the main topic, which is uh, what is Piper? Uh, what is this new uh, technology that is emerging and is gaining more and more uh, popularity nowadays? Well, as I said at the beginning, Piper is essentially a fresh multimedia service for Linux that can handle any kind of multimedia devices, doesn't matter if it's video or audio. Uh, it was originally meant to uh, handle only video devices. In fact, its original name was Pulse Video. But over the years, it evolved and now it, it was renamed to Piper and now it's more of a generic multimedia framework that can handle both devices. Uh, and the reason for that is because it started addressing many issues, you know, previous audio services uh, were having. Um, so at the end, the developers, they decided to, to just handle everything uh, and at some point replace, you know, those old uh, multimedia um, services. So basically with Piper what you can do is you uh, applications they can capture video from different uh, video sources such as uh, cameras or even uh, graphic sources for example if you want to capture your uh, desktop uh, it's Wayland or Vulkan uh, and you can also obviously do capturing and playback of audio uh, in uh, audio devices, for example, you can capture audio from uh, a microphone or, and you can do audio playback uh, using uh, a speaker or even uh, Bluetooth devices. So applications can do all of that very easily without worrying about configuring devices and using uh, low level APIs such as uh, video for Linux uh, when you want to capture video from cameras or Vulkan or Wayland complex APIs or um, you know, for audio, the also and Bluetooth low level and complex APIs. So, no applications don't need to worry about that. The, the, so, the, the way it works, Piper is a demo that runs the background, and applications connect to the demo, and they basically tell them, uh, Hey, Piper, I want to just capture buffers from this device, or I want to play buffers on this device, and that's it. They don't need to worry about checking if the device is being used, if it's not used, if they have permissions or anything like that. All of that is handled automatically by Piper. Um, so why do we need Piper? I mean, we already have, you know, in one hand we have uh, Pulse Audio and we have a Jack. So why do we need an extra one? Well, you know, for, so Pulse, Pulse Audio is a it's like a generic audio device, you know, um, service that handles, you know, all of that uh, in a generic way for you. And uh, Jack audio server is more focused on professional and low latency uh, audio processing. Um, but what if an application wants to do a little bit of both? You know, you can't. So uh, one of the problems Piper wants to solve is the unification of uh, Pulse Audio and Jack um, because it wants to replace them, get rid of them, and have a system running only one uh, multimedia framework, uh, simplifying a lot the Linux multimedia stack um, because at the moment it's quite complex because of all these different uh, services. 
Now, another issue that Piper wants to solve is security. Um, so uh, at the moment, you know, the current uh, approaches, the, uh, the current um, multimedia frameworks, they, they don't handle containers properly, such as Flatpak or Wayland. Uh, because their permissions basically they rely on the uh, video and audio user groups. Uh, Piper doesn't rely on that. Piper uh, supports fully supports containers properly, so it basically asks the container if he can access the device, and if he cannot access the device, it's gonna basically tell the client this device cannot be accessed. So um, it's um, uh, for security, especially nowadays, uh, Piper is much much uh, safer and better. Um, the third point that Piper wants to address is uh, low latency. Uh, Piper is low latency, uh, low latency and real time capable, and it can handle very small buffer sizes of up to 32 samples, which is uh, uh, only one or two milliseconds of latency. Uh, that not even Jack can do that. And uh, last and last least, it's uh, flexibility. So uh, Piper um, is very flexible because it exposes an API for users to write their own um, session manager and basically tell uh, Piper how to behave based on different uh, use cases and scenarios. So basically we have simplicity, security, uh, performance and uh, flexibility. Uh, <clears throat> so if we have a look at the uh, uh, Linux multimedia stack, uh, if we are running uh, the Piper daemon, we can see that there's something uh, like that. So at the bottom we have uh, the kernel with all the different drivers, and uh, on the top we have the um, different applications, the different multimedia applications. Uh, and the Piper is uh, like a middle layer in between those two uh, layers uh, where applications connect to it. Um, and then Piper manages those connections and uses uh, internally the uh, um, the kernel low-level uh, APIs, multimedia APIs. Uh, and uh, those connections, all of that is handled automatically by the session manager, which runs in a different process. Uh, so, so there's at least three processes going on here. There's uh, the application process, the Piper daemon process and the Piper session manager process and they all communicate uh, each other via sockets uh, using a protocol um, you know the protocol can be many different protocols can be used there is a pipe there is Piper has its own native protocol but others can be used you can use for example the Wayland protocol or you can even implement your own protocol if you want um, um, but yeah, so in this example, for example, if you have a look at the sound recorder on the top right uh, corner, uh, you can see that it's linked uh, with the, um, the green uh, square, which is a node, the green uh, processing element, uh, which is, uh, the green processing elements here are more like converters, you know, they do uh, audio conversion, they do video conversion or uh, audio mixing all of that and, and then we have the purple nodes that are sinks and sources that are connected to the device. So for example different applications could connect to uh, to the same node and Piper decides whether, sorry the session manager decides whether he wants to keep the previous link and play both of them at the same time or just remove the previous one and uh, only connect the new one. So, so yeah, uh, the session manager has control of uh, everything. So, um, if I want to use Piper on my system, do I have to um, update all my multimedia applications and use the new Piper API? Uh, not necessarily, uh, because um, Piper, the Piper project also provides uh, compatibility APIs built on top of Piper. Uh, so, for example, there is an ALSA. Um, for ALSA applications, there is a Piper PCM plugin that does the bridge between the ALS API and internally connects to the Piper demo and expose all these different uh, Piper nodes. Um, for pulse audio and JAT applications, uh, 
the same approach is done uh, by having replacement for libpulse.so and uh, libjack.so. So applications don't need to be updated right away if you want to use uh, Piper uh, because of thanks to these uh, compatibility APIs, uh, everything uh, um, works fine. Uh, but eventually, in the future, it's nice for the applications to change and use the Piper API to, to remove more complexity in uh, the multimeter stack. Um, <clears throat> so in terms of architecture and design, Piper basically has um, follows the same design as most of open source projects, so it's modular. Uh, and it has plugins. So basically, a module in Piper is something, it's basically an API. Um, so it's, uh, for example, you have a module for Bluetooth, you have a module for um, for video for Linux, you have a module for uh, Wayland, you have a module for Vulkan, you have a module for all these different low level APIs, uh, you have a module for Alsa. Uh, and then plugins are basically elements inside these modules uh, that implement uh, different functionalities. So, for example, you have uh, elements which are nodes that implement uh, audio mixing, uh, you have uh, also uh, or format conversion, like from video conversion or the conversion, uh, then you have also resampling. So you basically have, you can write plugins for Piper that do uh, any kind of different um, uh, media processing. Uh, so it's very similar to GStreamer, you know, it's graph based like GStreamer. Uh, think of nodes as GStreamer elements uh, and ports as uh, GStreamer pads. And obviously links uh, are uh, objects in Piper. You know, uh, it's not like a stream where you know you just link two elements. In Piper, you have to create the link and then you have to tell uh, what are the input and output nodes. Um, also, different to the streamer, um, Piper is multi-process, as I said before. So uh, the daemon is charged; it runs in the background and is charged to process most of the data. However, this is not. Uh, 100% necessary uh, if you have, for example, a slow node. Uh, clients have the ability to um, to run nodes locally uh, and avoid stalling uh, the daemon in case a node is very slow. Uh, this is, for example, the, uh, the case for uh, Bluetooth nodes, which can be very slow, especially when connecting and disconnecting um, a new Bluetooth device. Um, and, uh, and so, again, Multi-process and also the access, uh, the external session manager that configures all the links and nodes. Uh, this runs also into its own uh, uh, process, you know, communicating uh, and they all communicate each other with um, uh, with sockets. Um, then finally, uh, the uh, Piper it's uh, different from uh, the remaining. Um, open source project because uh, it only depends on its uh, simple plugin API library. Uh, it doesn't depend on anything else. Uh, it doesn't depend on Glib or, or any other famous open source library. And uh, it does that because it really wants to achieve low, um, low um, TPU usage and high performance. Uh, so this uh, SPA library is extremely simple and it's uh, and lightweight and it's used for generic multi it's used as a generic uh, purpose multimedia library uh, with that library uh, that library has basically helpers to do um, uh, audio conversion audio mixing audio resampling and it also provides some um, um, structures, data, stru basic data structures such as hash tables or uh, lists or um, arrays and, and all of that uh, and basic uh, video helper uh, functionality. Uh, the <clears throat> it's a mostly header only C library with uh, no dependencies. So uh, thanks to that, the performance and efficiency of Piper is very impressive um, because um, you know uh, it follows a, a static co-design approach. Uh, there's hardly any mallocs. Uh, if you grab for malloc in the Piper project, uh, you are not going to see a lot of them. Um, 
<clears throat> and it um, also uses modern Linux uh, APIs, uh, memfd and DMA buff to zero copy buffers from device to memory. Uh, so thanks to uh, and uh, event of the and uh, timer D for uh, scheduling. Uh, so thanks to all of that, the CPU usage uh, um, of Fiber is impressive and it's uh, low latency real time capable. In fact, if we have a look uh, at some graphs and we compare, you know, Piper with uh, Pulse Audio, uh, we can see that uh, in the following hardware, an Intel Core i7, um, we can see on the left chart, so we have on the bottom, the, uh, the x-axis is basically the buffer size, and the y-axis is uh, the CPU percentage. Uh, so we can see that for buffers, for big buffers of 8,192 samples, uh, Piper and Jack, the performance, the CPU user is mostly the same. Uh, Piper is 0.001% of CPU users, uh, while Pulse Audio is 0.005%. However, if we reduce the buffer size uh, up to 64 samples, we can see that the performance, the the performance and the CPU usage um, with uh, Pulse Audio increases quite significant, significantly. Uh, while Piper is um, it's only 0.03%. Uh, the graph on the right is the same, but uh, it's an example of mixing two uh, different uh, files, uh, mixing a 41.1 uh, kilohertz. Uh, file uh, with a 48 kilohertz file. Uh, the performance is also very, very impressive. Uh, for buffers of 512 um, samples, which is about 10 milliseconds, uh, the CPU user for Piper is only 0.007% and uh, for Pulse Audio is 0.2%. Now, if you compare uh, Piper against Jack, the performance is mostly similar, especially for big buffers of 8,000 um, samples. Uh, you can see on the on the graph on the, the graph on the left that uh, it's the same. But again, if you reduce the buffer size to achieve a low latency, uh, and you want to have a buffer size of 128 uh, samples, which is about four milliseconds. Um, the performance uh, in Piper is actually uh, lower than so, so the performance usage. It's lower than uh, Jack. So in Piper is 0.017 percent, whereas in um, Jack is 0.026 uh, percent. So yeah, as you reduce the buffer size, you can see that the performance uh, it's faster, it's better in Piper than Jack. Um, now, security, um, the way it works is the session manager uh, grants permissions to applications in Piper. Um, you can, you, the session manager basically can decide uh, wh what application uh, can have permissions to, to, uh, to access, you know, a specific device or not. Uh, and the Piper uh, the Piper nodes can be only visible for some applications. You know, um, the session manager can make visible applications can see only part of the whole node graph um, if they want. Um, now, there's three kind of permissions. Uh, there's read permissions, the write permissions, and there's executable permissions. Um, the read permissions uh, allows you to see the node um, and capture data from it. Uh, the write permissions allows you to uh, play um, buffers in a node. And uh, the execute permissions allows you to configure, uh, basically, the node. Uh, it allows you to set up formats um, and all of that. Um, the external session manager Piper, um, it's not included in the Piper project. You know, it's a, it's a, um, it's a, an external project. Uh, it's not maintained by the Piper developers. 
um, but it's the one charged that is the one charged to create and configure the devices uh, that emits then later the Piper nodes. Uh, it's also the one charged to um, set up nodes, format, port, etc., create links based on its policy logic when a client connects, grant security, ac uh, grant security and access control to clients, uh, and it's also launched by Piper by the Piper demo startup. Um, so the current start of Piper is version 0.3.15, released uh, in November 2020. Uh, there were some uh, major improvements in this release. Um, so one of the biggest improvements was um, that Piper reused the Alsa card profile code from Pulse Audio. So now devices support all profiles, UCM and uh, hardware mixes that Pulse Audio implements. So Piper basically, uh, right now, um, the, be the behavior uh, it's mostly the same as uh, Pulse Audio and Pulse Audio can be entirely replaced right now. Uh, tools such as the Pulse volume control works with Piper. Um, then there was a lot of improvements in Bluetooth. Um, so the HTTP profile uh, and HSP profile work now with the basic codecs. Uh, they work for most devices. Uh, support for MSBC codec is ongoing. Uh, most of the Jack application works uh, in Piper. Uh, the musical instrument digital interface works. Um, Video capture from video for Linux uh, sources, they work very well. Uh, and Wayland uh, screencasting from Western GNOME Shell and uh, Wayland Root is also supported. Uh, who started the project? Uh, the project um, is um, started by uh, Wim Tynan, uh, which is a well known all distributed developer and ex maintainer. Uh, it's sponsored by Red Hat. Uh, it's embraced by uh, Pulse Audio developers because it's seen as the next generation of Pulse Audio. Uh, and it's welcomed by uh, Alsa and Jack developers. Um, another interesting feature is that the, the license is uh, MIT. Um, some, uh, oh, before moving on to the next part, which is explaining how Piper uh, can be used for, um, for the automotive world, uh, I'd like to mention some contributions um, I have made in the project. So in Piper, there is uh, a tool called Piper Dot uh, that generates a dot graph showing all the Piper objects and links, uh, similar to GStreamer, uh, which is very handy uh, for debugging. Uh, and most of the Bluetooth uh, support. There was uh, I did a lot of uh, Bluetooth support, so I fixed several HTTP sync issues uh, in some devices. Uh, I have support for HTTP sources uh, using the SBC codec, and I had support for HSP and HFP uh, uh, profile uh, using the CV SD codec. Okay, so that was the first part of the um, talk, and now. Uh, I'm gonna move on uh, Piper in the automotive industry uh, section. So, why Piper suits perfectly the automotive world? Well, um, the current problem is uh, device handling in connected cars is complex um, because uh, cars, they have a lot of multimedia devices. You know, cars have a lot of cameras. They have a lot of um, speakers uh, and on top of that all of them can work at the same time and also different streams can uh, play audio at the same time so for example you can use the the navigation um, at the same time as listening to music and you can even have for example your bluetooth pair to the car and while you're speaking uh, when driving so uh, all this audio uh, needs to be handled properly and some you might want to just play, for example, the navigation on the front speakers of the car, but not on the back speakers of the car. Uh, or maybe you want to use the camera, the back camera when you are going backwards and not when you're going um, forward. So um, again, plenty of devices, plenty of speakers, plenty of streams. Uh, how do we handle that properly? Uh, it's very hard to do that with Pulse Audio. Uh, 
um, uh, without hacking into it. So the solution is a Piper with a flexible external session manager um, that uh, allows you to do custom policy logic, custom hardware pipelines, uh, hardware control abstraction and security. Now, since Piper doesn't include um, a proper and extensible session manager, here at Collabora, we have decided to create the first um, ex uh, external and uh, extensible session manager for Piper um, called White Plumber. Um, we, we decided to do this because we also had a client, uh, we had an automotive great Linux client who wanted to uh, adopt Piper as the core of their audio system into their system and they wanted uh, um, and we had to basically develop a session manager for them uh, so it was already uh, focused on embedded only but you know uh, a lot of work has been done and now it's uh, a generic and fully featured session manager for both embedded and desktop um, it's another thing to notice is that Wiprum is based on GObject to support writing bindings in other languages such as Rust, Python, and Lua. Because at some point we want users to have an even higher uh, API to basically control Piper. You know, we want users to control Piper using, for example, a Python script. Um, so basically, uh, Wireplumber, since it's higher uh, level API, it introduces uh, three new uh, objects. So it introduces the concept of uh, an endpoint. So an endpoint is basically uh, a set of nodes uh, that follows uh, a similar uh, 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 specific logic. Um, uh, this is very useful for devices that expose a lot of nodes, but a lot of them needs to be treated uh, uh, in the same way. Uh, so, for example, you could have a Bluetooth um, endpoint that has one node for uh, the uh, HTTP profile and one for uh, the HSP profile. And uh, application, when they connect to it, they don't need to worry about switching different profiles in the Bluetooth device. Uh, they just need to uh, connect to um, the specific endpoint stream. Uh, and this is where the endpoint stream constant comes in. Uh, an endpoint stream is essentially a connection point for an endpoint. Uh, it's like uh, a port for a node. It's like a port for an endpoint, sorry. Uh, and finally, we have also the concept of sessions, which is a set of endpoints. And uh, this is also important because it makes it easy to grant uh, permissions to just a group of endpoints. It's not instead of just one by one. Uh, so at the moment, Y Plumber creates a video session and an audio session. That, and it basically um, assigns a session to uh, an endpoint. So in this graph, we can see an example of two uh, software DSP uh, endpoints. Um, uh, this is, for example, uh, when running wire plumber in um, uh, in a laptop, so uh, in a laptop we have the same uh, we have the same we use the same audio device for both music and notification. Mm -hmm. So the endpoint basically uh, wraps uh, the same node and adds two conversions for different volume controls: one for music, and one for, for notifications. And the media player basically always uses the music um, stream from that endpoint. Whereas, uh, for example, uh, the desktop manager could use a notification endpoint to notify the user when a new email comes in. However, you know, uh, uh, in a car, you know, we might have a, a different hardware device for, um, for the notifications. Uh, that uh, we have, we might have different hardware device depending on uh, the stream. We might have a hardware device for uh, navigation and one for notifications. So in this case, the endpoint would wrap those two nodes into one endpoint and would link the music uh, stream with the uh, the also sub device uh, and the notification with the proper notification also sub device. Uh, but basically, uh, it hides the complexity of dealing with these uh, different nodes and the policy logic would be the same for both desktop and embedded and uh, automotive. Um, so the design of Wire Plumber, it's uh, essentially um, 
a library. So Wireplum is essentially a library that allows you to write in a much easier way other type of session managers. And uh, it also provides an executable that basically uh, executes uh, load modules written using that Wireplum library that have you know all the different functionality. Um, so users can just use the library to write their, the the Wireplum library to write their own Piper session manager, or they can use the already existing modules to do uh, Piper logic. Um, <clears throat> uh, an example of uh, Wireplum modules is uh, the monitor module, which basically monitor devices and creates nodes when uh, when enabled. Uh, we have also the Wireplum client permission modules that grant permissions to clients when connected. Uh, we have the configuration endpoint module that basically creates uh, endpoints based on configuration files. And we have the config policy module um, that basically is the one charged to create uh, links between endpoints based on configuration files. But users can decide whether they want to load these modules and implement their own uh, modules. Um, in the future, we plan to add uh, bindings uh, for to, in order to have a higher level API, uh, as I said before, um, um, to avoid using obviously the low uh, level Piper API and objects. Uh, and uh, we also want to, because at the moment, um, uh, the modules are reading configuration files, but we would like them to read also scripting files such as Lua to have more flexibility when writing um, policy logic uh, or endpoint creation uh, logic. Um, the current status of Wireplumber is version 0.3.0. Um, we started the first the first version uh, was uh, 0.1.0, which was released last year in July, and it was used uh, in AGL uh, Happy Halibut uh, 8.0 branch. Um, uh, then version 0.2 was released uh, last December 2019 and it was used both in AGL Happy Halibut and uh, Ichi Ice Fish. Uh, version 0.3 was released in June this year, uh, which was the first um, the release with version uh, with support for desktop. And uh, we probably are gonna do a release at the end of this year or beginning next year. Um, with uh, API improvements, uh, script uh, with scripting uh, bindings, um, and uh, uh, we want also to sta uh, stabilize the API because it's always at the moment it's always changing because we are trying to figure out the best um, the best uh, cases. Um, so again, future release will uh, support bindings, uh, improve the API, we need, uh, it, it will improve also the documentation and it will add more unit tests and examples so that people can contribute to it. Uh, so who started this project? Uh, the, project start, uh, the owner of the project is uh, George, um, who's working at Collabora too. Uh, the project Wireplan is sponsored by Collabora. Uh, it's welcomed by Piper developers. Uh, You've got the uh, Git repository and documentation there you want to know, and the license is the same as um, Piper, it's MIT. And uh, that's it for the uh, this talk. Uh, I'm gonna show you now uh, a demonstration um, so you can have a better idea of how all of this works. Uh, it's, a, it's a demonstration I pre-recorded. Uh, it's gonna be basically show the users of Piper both Piper and Wireplumber projects. Okay, so welcome back. And uh, so yeah, in this demonstration, what I wanna show you is how to use uh, Piper and uh, Wireplumber on your desktop, uh, which can be quite interesting for some of you if you want to uh, play a little bit with this technology and also have you know, a better feeling of how an audio server works. Um, so as you can see here, I have on my left terminal uh, the Pipework project already configured and built, and uh, the same on the right terminal with Wireplumber. 
So I'm gonna basically run first Piper here on the left and then right plumber. But before doing that, I wanna open a couple more terminals because I'm gonna use these uh, terminals uh, to to run the client. Uh, now by default, if I just run an audio client here, such as M Player, it's gonna connect to the default audio server of my uh, distro, which is um, Pulse Audio and. Uh, we don't want to do that. We want them to connect to Piper. Um, so we are going to run make shell that basically sends sets uh, a bunch of environment variables, such as you know the path, which allows you to use the Piper tools you just already built, or um, the LD library path, which points to the build directory of uh, the Piper we just built and we are going to run. So make shell allows us to run clients within this shell uh, and they will automatically connect to Piper, which makes very easy to, to test Piper. So I'm going to open a bunch more tabs because we're going to use several um, clients and we're going to run make shell on all of them. Uh, I think five should be enough. So yeah, now once everything is ready, we are gonna run Piper with make run, and we are gonna run um, Pipe Plumber with the log enabled. So you can see that it's basically doing some stuff. Now uh, we are, you're gonna also see some warning messages such as device being busy, uh, and this is because I'm recording um, using my microphone. So that device is used by the uh, screen recorder. Um, but it should be fine for what we are going to do, so don't worry too much about that. So everything is running. Um, this is the log of Piper. And now we're going to try to play some audio with M player. For example, this one. Now, uh, M player by default uh, uses the um, Pulse Audio API. So uh, what, when I run this, what it's going to do is uh, going to use the... Um, Lib Pulse compatibility API of Piper and that library internally it's gonna tell Piper that a new client comes in and it's gonna notify the session manager and the session manager is gonna basically create the nodes and link the nodes based on you know uh, the custom policy poli uh, policy. So I run it and uh, you can hear that music is playing. Uh, we can also see some warnings uh, of uh, the Pulse Audio compatibility. Uh, API library. Uh, not all features are implemented yet, but uh, yeah, we, we can hear music. Uh, now I'm gonna use the uh, Piper dot tool to generate a dot graph similar to GStreamer, and we can see that you know the nodes are uh, basically connected. Uh, it's very easy to use. You just do Piper dot and then the name of the file where you want the graph to be written. And then we can view the graph with tools such as X dot. Um, so yeah, we can see these here that uh, web number linked uh, the different nodes. So the green squares here are um, the nodes, the red square are the output ports, and the purple squares are the input ports, and the blue squares are actually the links created by the uh, web number. So um, this as a playback uh, node is actually the M player client uh, that has two channels, uh, the left channel and the right channel, and is connected to a converter. And that converter is connected to the uh, default uh, ALSA node, uh, which is my speakers on my laptop. Uh, we can actually view more information if we run it with uh, the detail. Uh, option uh, and we can see more properties but it makes the graph much bigger so yeah we can see here for example um, that then player is this node with this ID and we can see that the also device that it's using is uh, the uh, hardware zero uh, so yeah we can now do more cool stuff for example we can use uh, the pulse or the volume control uh, power control uh, and we can see that 
it's, it's monitoring um, all the audio being played on, on my laptop um, and we can also change the volume for example we can see also some warnings here because not all the uh, um, compatibility APIs are implemented yet but uh, yeah it's it's working nicely um, and we can see then now here if we run the Piper tool um, that it's created while I'm creating more links now all the uh, output all the sorry input uh, nodes uh, they have a monitor port and basically the pulse the volume control uses those monitor ports and creates these nodes um, to actually monitor the audio coming out so that's why we see this here um, so yeah now we can do one more thing which is uh, running Carla uh, Carla is a um, audio plugin host and here in the patch bay section we can see uh, all the stuff all the audio stuff that is connected so M player is this also playback node and uh, we can see that two channels are connected we can um, disconnect the left channel for example and now only the right channel is playing on my speaker um, so if we run the tool again we can see that for example only the right channel is connected and for example if I uh, I can even connect the right channel the left channel to the right speaker and we, we can see here that in player both channels are connected to the uh, left um, sorry to the right channel of the audio convert yeah we We can leave that as it is, and it's back to normal. So uh, yeah, that's all for this demonstration. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and uh, see you soon. And that's it. Thank you for watching, and uh, please let me know if you have any question. I will be very happy uh, to reply uh, as many as I can. Bye.